Hey guys, Vlad Excel here with another video and today we are talking about uphill running. We're going to go through the technique you want to be using when going uphills and free workouts to make you a better uphill runner. All right, so uphill running technique. So I'm not going to reinvent the wheel here and tell you you're going to be running uphill on your hands. Obviously, we're going to be running the same way as you usually run. What you do want to try and do is actually shorten your stride and keep everything as close as you can to your body. So I want to be leaning forward and almost falling in, but not thinking about big arm swings or big striding steps. I want to keep it as small as I can, get as close as I can to my body, because if I lift my hand all the way up to here, it takes a lot of energy from my heart to pump blood all the way to the end of my limb. So I want to keep everything as close as I can. So when I'm running, I don't want to be doing this. I want to stay as close as I can, keep it on my toes. So I want to make sure as I run up, I'm staying up on my toes and I'm literally just trying to bounce. So even if you are not a front foot runner, you don't want to be doing this because all that weight is gonna be falling, taking you back because you put on weight on your heel. So you wanna be thinking, I'm on my toes, I'm leaning forward, and I'm just slowly bouncing through it. So a lot of people, when they do run uphill, um, you see them kind of stay upright and maybe walk. And even if you are getting super, super tired, you wanna to get to the point where you are leaning forward, that that gravity does a little bit of work. So running up, uphill, same kind of mentality. I'm in here. I'm really thinking about letting gravity do a bit of work and then making sure that all that weight falls forward and nothing is not on the back. That's why I'm really focused on landing on the front of my foot so none of that weight goes on my heel because I know when it goes on my heel, I'm gonna be fighting against gravity to go up while all that weight is actually behind me. So if you're a trail runner and you've done some longer trail runs or trail races, you do know that you're gonna be hiking some uphills. Um, as a running coach and as somebody that worked with a lot of athletes in the past, this is what I usually get to see when they get tired their hiking just goes like that, they fall back, they might have their hands on their, hi on their hips and all their weight falls back. So even if you are super, super tired, you're very, very heavy, at least have your hands on your thighs. So at least that way you fall forward. You can hike using obviously your upper body as like speed hiking, but if you are getting to the point where you're really, really struggling, just lean forward that way at least the gravity goes forward and you move up still at a slow pace but you're still moving instead of kind of lean back kind of doing this and this is what i see a lot and you're fighting against gravity so from here literally just lean forward make sure your feet are facing forward and then just go at the same pace but make sure that you're leaning forward So obviously the technique of running uphill is fairly simple. You lean forward, you stay on your toes, and you try and let gravity do some work, and you're on the right track. But to realistically, to be able to go faster uphill, that comes in the training. So you want to get to the point where you are fitter, you are stronger, and your VO2 max is higher. And personally, the three workouts that I like to do to improve that is the short one. So I try and go, you know, I might start anywhere between 10 times one minute as hard as I can running uphill and then walking down. So for one minute, I'll really push the pace um, hard, 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 trying to get to that maximum heart rate and then have about two minutes of walking slowly down or slow jog down. Um, so I'll do that workout. I might do six to eight sets. So six times one minute or so eight times um, one minute when I'm far away from a race and it might be like, you know, just kind of trying to stay fit. And as I get closer to a race, maybe like two months before a key race, 
that workout might be like 12 or 14 or 16 or even 20 times one minute. So I'm really pushing that envelope on my VO2 max. By far my favorite way of doing those VO2 max short efforts is on the treadmills. So I'll get on the treadmill, I'll put the incline on 15% and then I'll set a speed. Um, you know, it could be like 11K an hour, 12K an hour, and then just go for one minute on, one minute off as well. So for one minute, I'll be running uphill as hard as I can. And then for the other minute, I'll be standing on the side of the treadmill, just bringing my heart right down and then doing that again and again and again. So that's another option of doing that VO2 max workout while building up that strength in your legs and not over pushing it on your body. Um, so for example, if you do try and do a VO2 max workout on a flat road, you really have to stretch your muscles to the max. And there's the chance of injury is a lot greater than doing VO2 max on an uphill because in an uphill, you know, you are going to go fast, but that heart rate is going to go up here very, very quickly. So in many ways, it's also a safer way of staying away from injuries. So obviously those short bursts, the one minute efforts, that's the kind of VO2 max workout that I'm looking for to expand my lungs. Um, but another workout that I really do often is the seven, three times seven minutes. Um, that's pretty much the base of that workout. So that'll be a slower pace, there'll be a gradual uphill, but I'll run up for seven minutes nonstop, and then it might take me 12, 14 minutes to go down. I'm not too worried about the downhills here. I'm really putting all the focus on the uphill, but I'll do three sets of them. And then again, as they get closer to a race, that workout might move from three times seven to three times 10 minutes, so 12 minutes. Um, which will kind of go to that kind of top of that workout range that I might be doing. But what you do want to do there is still put an effort through it, but obviously not the same effort as the short one minute VO2 max efforts. And this kind of workout, when you go for seven minutes, for 10 minutes, nonstop uphill, you're building strength. Um, you're building some endurance there as well. So especially as a long distance runner, that's a workout that you want to make sure that you do put in your training cycle on a regular basis. And the third workout that I would use to improve my uphill running is going for like a 30 minute tempo effort on hilly terrain. So I'm not looking for one big climb, I'm rather looking for like small hills. Um, and then I go fast up the uphills, slow on the downhill, slow on the flat, fast up the uphill, slow on the downhill, slow on the flat. And you know, being kind of rolling trails or rolling roads, I'm getting to the point that I might have 30 second pushes or maybe two minute pushes um, on the uphill. So it's really kind of mixed up, but I'm trying to keep a good effort for those 30 minutes. And that workout can be anywhere between 20 minutes to 40 minutes, but 30 minutes is definitely that sweet spot where you are getting a good workout, um, but not overdoing it. So again, just trying to make sure that you mix some different lengths of uphill efforts um, and that just you know just trying to making sure that you find the right trail or road where it's just like rolling roads or trails um, that you do have the chance to go hard and then easy hard easy hard easy but not to a certain amount of time so that will be very mixed um, so really kind of giving the body that chance to guess and to improve a little bit more on a side note, if you are a trail runner, you want to be doing specific hiking workouts. Um, so you don't want to get to the point where in a race is the only hiking that you really do. But same as uphill running, you can do the same workouts um, hiking, specifically if you're doing a race with a lot of elevation. You know, get on there and do 10 minutes of hiking non-stop and you can do three sets of that or hike as fast as you can for one minute, then walk back down, hike back again. So really put some focus into hiking because ultra running, really mountain technical trail running does require a lot of hiking. And you wanna make sure that you focus on that in your training and don't just get to the race and be kind of like, well, I can hike because anybody can hike. Um, you wanna put specific work into that as well. 
So obviously the main thing with uphill running is making sure that you are fit and strong. Um, so getting some strength work will be important, um, but then getting your fitness to the next level will probably be the main difference between you going slow and fast uphill. Um, obviously if you're doing a race, it's trying to stay light. So when you go uphill, any extra weight on you does make even a bigger difference than a flat trail or a flat road. Um, and then yeah, making sure that you add specific uphill workout sessions in your training cycle and just being consistent with that, you will see that it will pay off. If you did enjoy that video, do smash that like button and subscribe, a lot more videos to come. Um, if you do want a specific workout for uphill running, check the video out here. Otherwise, I will see you in the next video. Peace.